everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I appreciate you stopping by. So today I am going to show you how to can up this deliciousness. This is corn relish and it is amazing. You're gonna want it on your plate at every one of your summer barbecues. It is so, so good. Now, the recipe that I used comes from the uh, ball canning website. But as I was doing some research on the recipe, I did find it, well, versions of it in their, uh, the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. They actually have two versions of it in this book. They have home style corn relish, and then they also have traditional corn relish. Uh, all three recipes are similar, um, have very similar ingredients. The home style corn relish allows for the addition of clear gel to thicken it. Not sure you need that, um, but you could if you want to. So that is, know that that option is in the this book. Um, the traditional corn relish, one of the changes or one of the differences is they have added cabbage to that one, so that is an option as well, but I'm going to go through the one that I used to can up, um, the one that I'm gonna show you today, and again, it is from the Ball Canning website. Now, this is a water bath or steam canning recipe. However, we are canning up low acid ingredients. So it is gonna be really important that you measure accurately and you do not add any more or make adjustments to the low acid ingredients. Uh, this, this recipe does include vinegar and you wanna make sure that whatever vinegar you are using that it is at least 5% acidity. Now, switching up your vinegar is fine to swap out. Uh, they recommend using white vinegar, but you could swap it out for another one as long as you are certain that it is 5% acidity or more. But I just want to caution you that the correct acid to low acid food in this is really, really important. So please do not make adjustments as far as the amount of ingredients go. Um, as I go through the list of things that we, the ingredients that are in it, I will explain to you some safe changes that you can make if you you choose to do so. Many of you requ have requested small batch canning recipes, so that was another reason why I chose this one over the other ones. This recipe is going to make about six half pint jars. Now, as I stated, we are going to be canning this using water bath or steam, the steam canning method. You can can this in half pints or pint jars. The recipe from the ball canning website which is the one I followed and used, suggests using half pint jars, but the recipes in their book have the same ingredients in them pretty much, but they've allowed for uh, canning it in pint jars. The processing time is the same. So you can can this in pints or half pints. I canned mine in half pints because I just don't need that much all at once. All right, so for the ingredients we need, we talked about the vinegar. You need two cups of white vinegar or a vinegar that is at least 5% acidity. We need two thirds cup of sugar, one tablespoon of salt. I highly recommend using uh, canning or pickling salt uh, simply because it doesn't have any additives in it and it will not cause your brine to discolor or look strange. If you choose to use another salt, there may be additives in it that will change the color of your brine or um, make the, the relish look strange in the jar. So that's why I recommend canning and pickling salt. We need four cups of cooked corn kernels. I used fresh corn, it's gonna be about eight large ears, and then I just boiled them for five minutes, removed them, put them in cold water to cool, and then I removed the kernels from the corn. You can use uh, frozen corn if you prefer, that's certainly easier, just defrost it first. And again, the recipes in the ball book, um, explain that whereas on their website it doesn't so anyway you can use frozen or you can use fresh i do not recommend using already canned corn that it will interfere with the quality and it will not be the same we need two cups of dice mixed red and green bell peppers about too large now you can swap out peppers you can use all red you can use all green if you wanted a little bit of heat, you could use a habanero, you could use a, 
a uh, little bit of jalapeno just do not change the amount so make sure you measure accurately we need two cups of peppers they suggest red and green bell peppers but you can put use any kind of pepper you want that is a safe change we need three quarters of a cup of diced celery Again, celery is not something we see in a lot of canning uh, recipes. It is in a few tested recipes. This is a tested recipe, so it is safe to add it. There are no canning guidelines for canning celery on its own. We need a half a cup of finely chopped onion, approximately one small onion. Again, onions can be safely swapped out in recipes, uh, so you can use any kind of onion you want. You can use a sweet onion, onion, a white onion, yellow, red, whatever you prefer or have on hand. For our spices, they are recommending one tablespoon of dried mustard. I use dried mustard seed, um, which is a fine change to do, but again, you can use the powdered dried mustard if you prefer. We need one teaspoon of celery seeds and one teaspoon of ground, ground turmeric. If you would like to add a little more heat to this, it would be fine to add some dried red pepper flakes to add a little bit of heat intensity if you prefer that as well. I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. All right guys, we're gonna start with our pickling liquid. We're going to use two cups of white vinegar, 5% acidity at least, two thirds of a cup of sugar, and one tablespoon of canning and pickling salt. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and let it boil till the sugar and salt dissolves and then we are going to add our veggies. And our pickling liquid has come up to a boil, so now we are going to add our four cups of corn kernels and then our veggies. I have one cup of chopped green bell pepper, one cup of red bell pepper, three quarters of a cup of diced celery and a half of a cup of finely chopped onion. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of mustard seed, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of celery seed. We're gonna bring all this up to a boil, reduce the heat, and simmer for 15 minutes. While that's happening, I'm gonna get my canner and my jars ready, and then we will be all set for canning. All right, I gently simmered my relish for 15 minutes, so we are all set for canning. Modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids if we are processing for 10 minutes or more. We're gonna be processing for 15 minutes. So I've just washed my jars and my lids. We are putting our relish into a hot jar, so make sure you are starting with a hot jar. I just keep my jars hot in my canner. So we're gonna go ahead and ladle our hot relish into our clean hot jars. And we are looking for half of an inch of headspace. All right, once you've reached the proper headspace, you wanna use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife to release air bubbles. So we're just gonna poke around our jar. I do wanna point out, you wanna make sure that you have enough of your liquid in your jar that covers, you want your liquid to cover your relish. So make sure that as you're ladling it in, you have enough liquid for it to cover your veggies. Once you reach the proper headspace, we're going to use a clean paper towel to clean the rims of our jar. And then we are going to center our lids. And add our bands to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. All right, guys, my, I got about six uh, one cup jars um, of the corn relish. I do have some left over, so you're gonna get six to seven. The recipe claims about six. I had some left over, so I could probably have gotten another one. Anyway, um, you want to have your heat on high. If you are doing traditional water bath canning, you want enough water in your canner to cover your jars by an inch. The water should be simmering before you place your jars in your canner. I am steam canning. I had three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my canner when I put my jars in there. So now we're just waiting to come up to temperature. If you are steam canning, the uh, there's a dial gauge on top that tells you when to start your processing time. If you're water bath canning, you want to bring your water to a full rolling boil before you start your processing time. Once you are ready to start processing, you want to decrease your heat just to maintain a full rolling boil in water bath canning or staying in your green zone on your dial gauge of your steam canner. We're gonna process for 15 minutes and when we get there, I'll bring you back. 
All right, guys, so how easy was that? Quick and easy recipe, really the hardest part is the chopping and the blanching of your corn if you are using fresh, but it goes pretty quickly. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, cause I know I will get asked about this. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of pickle crisp to each jar. I believe it's an eighth of a teaspoon or so to each jar, jar pickle crisp. If you're not familiar is calcium chloride and it helps to retain the texture. Um, of veggies when we water bath can them. So it's perfectly fine to do that if you would like to do that. I did not do that. I thought the texture was just fine on its own, but that is certainly an option for those of you who choose to do that. As far as uses go, it is great to put on a sandwich, um, bratwurst, burgers, all those fun things that we grill. It's delicious as a side. Um, you can stir it into salads or you can top a salad with it. And one of our favorite ways to use it is to just use it like a salsa. Absolutely delicious on top of a tortilla chip. Anyway, I hope you will give this recipe a try. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.